Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be talking about the input nodons and what they do. So yeah, basically this is all your this is going to be inf info on every single input node on there is in the game. This is going to be a three part series where we go through input, middle, and output, and then object. So it's actually a four part series. And yeah. I've had this plan for a while and I'm excited to finally do it. So first of all, yep, the constant node on. It constantly outputs a num number value from negative a thousand to a thousand. It like it, it constantly outputs it so if we get out a number of objects. So if we put our constant value, um output into our number value, input, the value of 34, it will constantly display 34. Okay. Button node on. So the button node on, you can select as many buttons as you want, or just one button, uh, for, for this to activate. Now you can do it on press, which me means it's like, it gives an output for like, a frame when the button is pushed and then it won't turn on even if you're still holding the button. While pressed is every frame that you're holding the button for, it will output. So the difference between on press and output is on press is only for a single frame, while pressed is for the entire time you hold it down. Controller number, so you can select between one two, three, and four, from the switch, which I'm assuming, because I actually don't know what the switch button does, but I'm assuming it allows you to, well, use the switch in some kind of way. And also there's an auto button down here, which it, I think it allows every controller or just the number one player to use that button as well to also give an output. So if I set it to the uh, R button on my controller and set it to controller number one and connect it to and it will and connect it to another object, it should and also when it's being pressed it can only output a number value of one. It won't go any higher. So you hold down num you hold down hold down my right stick, it's on while not right stick. Sorry, I'm out of this. Uh, Hold down your right uh, R button on your controller, and because it's while pressed, it'll constantly output. Whereas if I go to button it on, change it to on press, you can see it's it's like flashing. So yeah, it's only on for about a frame. Okay, next node on. So now we're going to move on to our stick node on. Now this can be, now it, it seems simple, there's actually a lot of things you can do with it. So first, same thing as the, as the uh, button mode on, we have these, we have the, we have the player numbers. Then we have output, analog or digital, which is also what this is. So I'm going to start with digital. So it either goes from zero to Okay, so we have to. So what digital does is basically when the control stick is not being moved at all, it will sit there. But once it's moved into the sh threshold of zero point one percent, like moved the joystick, it will turn on and give an output of one. Same go. Same thing goes for the other way but it'll provide a negative one instead. And you can set this from any value, so I can set it to, it has to be 100% before it turns on. And yeah, as you can see, if I go at like halfway, it's not turning on. So, and then you can set the direction. So that, so any can be, so it uses any direction, so you can, 
any 360 sort of thing will make it go up to one. It can't go to negative with this option, so it's always going to output one. If it's out up there. Actually, I never should have analog. I'm weird. Okay, so basically, it, it acts like digital, but it'll but once it reaches that threshold, it'll start going up from there on a slope, as you can see by its representation. Same thing for the negatives. So if I go to up down. Uh, so yeah, it goes down to the negatives as well, and it'll, basically what it'll do is it'll get, so once it gets up there, it'll put a slope down, and how far you've gone up that slope, it'll make a bigger number. So if I connect this to the number node on, I'm actually going to make this so yeah. I'm moving it a little bit, it's not going up, but once I hold it fully, yeah. it doesn't work. So once I put, so it's, yeah, so yeah, it, it'll go up the slope, and then until it reaches one, one, the output of one, and as with the button node on, it'll only output from, it'll only input negative one or positive one. Apart from the fact that it can go on slopes this time, so I can output uh, decimal numbers. Now, uh, so up, down, so this is self explanatory kind of, this is easy to explain. So up, if you push it up, it'll, if you push your joystick up, it'll, you know, it'll, like, it'll check if it's put, being pushed up, and then it'll do that slope thing. But, it, but this, but with these options, it, with the up option, it can't go to the negatives. Same thing with the down, but it's but it's down instead of up. Same, same thing with left, step, but it's left. Same thing with right, but you push it right. Now these work a little bit differently, up, down, and left, right. So left, right can go into the negative, and up, down can go into the negatives. So if you put, so say you're pushing it left, it'll go down to the negatives. Pushing it right, it will go to positives. If go up down, you push it up, and it'll go up, like it'll go to the positives, push it down, and it'll go to the negatives. So yeah, that's how that works. Now you go to which stick. So this decides if you're using the left stick on your controller, or the right stick on your controller. You can only use one of these at once with um, with your uh, with your how do I explain this? So you can't you only, so you can't get negatives. You can't get both negatives and positives with this any option. I don't know. I'm just going to stop explaining something. So yep, sides left stick. That's right, stick. This isn't scripted. Maybe I should have scripted it. Alright. Moving on. If touched node on. So this is a touch screen node on. Yeah. But you can also. Uh, so you can also use if it's in the game. If you push down on your right stick, you can have this little cursor pop up. And then you can push your right button, the R button on your controller, and it will click. So if I, so you can click the rounds and do that. Now, there is on touch, so it's like the buttons, the button node ons on press, but it's on touch, and the same thing with the button node ons while pressed, but it's while touched. So basically it's the button node on, but it's touch screen instead of a controller. Touch where to output. Now this is a little bit different from the button node on. So you can either set it to this node on. So it will set it to this node on's position relative to the camera. So even if the camera moves, if it's not on the if it's not on this node on, you won't be able to press it at all. But if it is, then you, should, then you will be able to press it. It moves with the camera. 
and and then you can set it to anywhere so if you press anywhere on your screen you will be able to well uh, activate this node on so i'm going to set it to wild touch and anywhere okay and it'll output uh, explaining this now it'll output a value of one when it is pressed so if i get my little pointer out hold down the r you can see it goes down to one when i push it down anywhere on the screen okay moving on to the touch position mode on now for this one we're going to need two number object numbers because it outputs two so we're going to have a x position and a y position now how this works is it gets it gets your nintendo switch screen in the resolution of it and now so so basically it'll get somewhere on your screen like it'll find it'll find where it's like the if touch node on but it'll find where you're touching so if i to do this because it outputs a big number so now if we play we use my pointer it'll track where your pointer is on the screen it gives an x coordinate and a y coordinate so move it down it's moving the y coordinate a lot move from side to side it's moving the x coordinate a lot you don't have any settings of this one it just outputs x and y from where you're touching on the screen if you're not touching at all it won't output anything if you stop touching it'll leave it where it is until you press again so the only time it will output zero is when you haven't touched the screen at all yet yeah. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Okay. moving on to the shake mode on now i kind of like this control so what it does is it gets how much you're shaking your controller so you can check if if it's if you can check if it's shaking auto which will default to if you're using a pro controller it'll just default to your controller and if it and if you pick one of these it'll check if you're using um it will check if you're using your left joy con or your right joy con if you're using a pro controller if you check either one you check you can uh, shake now this one is you shake the nintendo switch itself so if you shake it if you shake the actual switch console which i'm not going to do because it's in the dock it will output as well just like the joy cons now you can set your controller number if you're using joy if you're using joy con l or r so that's the same way as all the other things like button and stick to. It just checks which controller number. Uh, now uh, digital and analog, it works the same for the stick mode on, but it's shaking instead of your uh, joystick. So how much how much shake power there is? So the harder you shake it, the higher it's going to output. Now, if we go over here, there's a direction. So if you have any direction checked, you can shake it in any direction that you want, X, Y, or Z shaking, and it will always go up. But you can set directions you want to shake it in. So let's say I want to shake it forward. I can like, right, so let's say your control, control controller, uh, is facing upwards at the charging port like the the um the top buttons are facing up towards your roof or the sky whatever if you shake it forward it'll go up and so yeah you can pick one of those directions shake it and that'll be the only direction 
Sadly, you can't have multiple directions, but it's up there. So, BB. So if I go in, check forward, the number goes up. Values on how hard you shake it. Okay. Now, I'll tilt the tilt node on. It, it works like the shake node on. Kind of. So it checks how much you're tilting your Joy-Con. So you can only... You, you, it, it checks how much your controller has been tilted in a certain direction. So Z, uh, or Z, you can tilt it in the Z axis rotation, and it'll go up or down, kind of like the uh, stick mode on, where you can get negatives and positives. Um, all of these are the same as the shake mode on, like switch is the switch, joke on right, joke on left, but controllers will always default to which I've selected. Controller number, digital and analog work the same. This is where we get into new things. So you can tilt it in the Y direction, and it will tilt, and you can also tilt it in the X direction, and you can also tilt it in the Z direction. Now, uh, angle of rotation is a bit funky. So, what you do is you select your rotation and it'll check if you've rotated it between so if it'll, it'll check if you've rotated it 180 degrees in either either direction of that rotate axis of rotation so if i select x go into the game you'll output between uh 100 okay no i Got that wrong. Sorry for misinformation. You sent an output between negative 180 and 180. Compared to that where it's in tilt, the output between 0 and 1. So it'll check for the actual angle. It'll give you the angle of it instead of just a random output. Sorry for the little bit of misinformation, but I'm stupid. So I'm if face up, it'll check if your it'll check for okay. So it wants to okay. So I'm gonna explain this first. So yeah, you know this switch, joke on yeah, you know that stuff, controller number, all that jazz, uh, digital and analog, you know that jazz. But here's where it gets interesting. So if you check front with if face up, it'll check if your con controller is like lying flat on the ground or table, wherever you're sitting your controller. It'll check for that, and if it is sitting comfortably there, then it'll, out the, it'll output uh, a one. Now if, you're, if it's facing, if your like top buttons are facing up to the roof and you've got top selected, It'll output a one. Now, if I've got left, you have to turn your controller. So, so let's do the top, and then turn it ninety degrees to face your, the wall that's right of the controller, and then lay it, and then it'll output one. Same thing for the right, but turn it left. The right. Yeah, right. So left is right, right is left. It doesn't make any sense. I know. Just go with it. Now back is so uh, basically Joy-Con drift. So shove your Joy Cons into the ground, or shove your uh, joysticks into the ground, aka uh, Joy-Con drift uh, spawn, and then completely 180 your controller when it's facing up. And it'll give you an output of 1. Constantly probably pushing down your top buttons. <sighs> yeah, I, I 
I don't use that one often, but there you go, that's information on it. Rotation speed. So this one is like tilt. But instead of tilt, it, it checks for the speed of the rotation. Yeah. So it will check for the speed instead of your... your uh, it'll check for your speed instead of your, uh, like, just general tilt. So the faster you spin it, the faster you spin it, the higher it will go for a short time. All of this stuff you know over here. Change it. Change the direction, or change it to any direction. Which in my opinion is quite fun. Now you can have a direction, so... So let's... Let's select, um... Z here. So you can only... You'll only output if it, it okay, no. so to only output a positive value even if it's rotating either way same thing with the minus but it only outputs a negative value never mind more misinformation okay what I, I what I think because I don't understand this not on that well means I probably shouldn't be creating this video in the first place. But what I think it means is that if you set it to plus it'll check only for the Okay, so it only checks for left rotations. Negative only checks for right rotations. Plus plus or minus checks for both. I figured it out. I'm smart. Anyway. Okay. Now this one I can't actually show you because I don't have an IR motion camera on my Pro Controller. But what it does, it it, it recognizes. So it uses your IR motion camera to detect, uh, uh, like. So what it so you can either select controller number one or controller number two. So you can either select near, normal, or near and far. Okay, so basically what it does is you see this little grey box here? It'll create a bunch of squares where it thinks that it's ground or shiny things. This is how like the toy con works. It checks for your like it checks for like shiny spots, glowing spots, and then puts a square to represent it. Or a rectangle. Now you can either get near, so it check it'll kind of work if it it'll only try to do it if it's close to the shiny thing. If it's normal, it's like a kind of like far distance as well. But no near things. And near and far is basically normal and near combined. But what there's two. That one was kind of hard to explain without being able to actually use it. It'll out and it'll output the number of squares that it sees. This one will output its rotation speed from negative one to one. And this one will output from negative one to one. Same with that. The other ones I explained. Uh -huh. Object break. So this one is interesting because uh, if you connect it to the number object and select it to trade box, then if we spawn in a box and also a destroy. Mode on with box enabled. As soon as the game starts, that box will get destroyed. And it's checking for box, so if the box is 
destroyed, it will output for a short time. Now if we do something that will be explained in the next video. Uh, so because it only outputs for a short time, you barely even get to see it. But if we do this, then it'll it'll constantly show how many things you've broken. Otherwise, it'll, it's like an on-press thing, where as soon as it's broken, it'll output and then immediately turn off the next frame. So that's how that works. Now for on start, it'll... Okay, so it will output... It's like an on-press output as soon as the game starts. Now if we do the same thing we just did with the object break, uh, node on, and we can just take one like this, I'll just still explain in the next video, it'll, it'll, so yeah, it gives an output of one as soon as the game starts, and then next frame immediately turns off. And I, that's the end of the video. That's every input node on explained. I hope you enjoyed me rambling on about the input node ons. And I hope to see you in the next video where we'll be explaining the middle node ons. Bye bye.